right, what is going on guys? So I am pretty excited today because we are going to get to test out and review this new rod here from St. Croix. So that is going to be the Legend Elite Panfish Series. I hope this comes out well. So uh, about two months ago or so, I got the uh, Mojo Bash from St. Croix. That was my first kind of dabble into the uh, more higher end, more expensive rods. That that's, that's not just like a Walmart combo. And I loved it. And if you know, I like pan fishing more than I like bass fishing. So I knew eventually I was going to end up uh, getting an ultralight, com uh, ultralight rod from St. Croix. I looked at their kind of their entry level panfish rod and I just wasn't too impressed with it. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have like a mid tier panfish rod or at least pan for specific rod. So the next best thing was gonna be this thing, which is as high end as you can go uh, for made in the US. So it retails for about $360, which is a ton of money. Uh, I would not pay that much for it. I did not pay that much for it because I found this on eBay. So a couple weeks ago, I was just kind of browsing through eBay and this rod came up. It had a 99 cent starting bit on it. It is used, or at least it was marked as used, but it still had the tags on it. And after I looked at it, I could not find any kind of defect with it, no scratches, nothing. So I might have just got a brand new rod that was just mislabeled, or it might have been used so I put the tag back on. I don't know, but anyway, I put my bid in. Uh, I ended up winning it, and it was not uh, anywhere near $360. It still was a good amount of money. I'd rather not say exactly what I paid for it, but it wasn't 360, but it was still a lot. Um, and it's not that old. So based on the serial number, before I put the bid in, I looked it up. It was made uh, in July 2019, and I put the bid in, or I bought it in uh, September 2020. So whoever had it, only had it for a little bit over a year, or maybe about a year. Uh, so this is, like I said, my first kind of high-end panfish rod. I'm excited to see how it produces. Uh, so it's got uh, titanium and torzite guides. It's got eight of them on the six foot ultralight. Uh, so way lighter than aluminum and torzite is actually way slippier, slippier, slipperier than aluminum oxide. So that's what makes, part of the thing that makes this rod super expensive because it has guides that by themselves retail for probably over $100. Uh, this is as high end as you can get for, for uh, the St. Croix product line. It's got SC5 Graphite, which is almost their top of the line. They go up to SC6, so this is right on up there for comparison. Their entry level rods are SC2 Graphite, so this is pretty high up there. It's got all their technologies, which are listed right here. So ART, uh, adva or Advanced Reinforcement Technology, I think it is. So online they claim that with that, their rods are 10 times stronger than some of the other rods without it. Uh, IPC integrated poly curve, uh, basically just the way they make the blank looks better. I'm not gonna bore you with that stuff too much. You can find that on St. Croix's website. But this is the six foot ultralight, fast action. Uh, my favorite thing about it is probably just this little split grip handle. I like split grip handles a lot. Not too many panfish rods have that. Uh, the real seat looks nice, not my favorite. I wish it was a twist in from the top, but it's a twist in here from the bottom. So there's still gonna be a little bit of uh, threads on the bottom when I'm holding it. For today, I'm just gonna put a 1,000 size Diawilla Gallus on there. I'd like to get a, a nicer reel to match this rod with, but beautiful rod. Uh, St. Croix rods tend to run a little bit uh, stronger and thicker than, or not thicker, but stronger and stiffer than what they're rated for. This is an ultralight, but I just tested it kind of against my uh, other light or uh, ultralight rods and this one's pretty stiff compared to those other ones So it should have the backbone to do what I needed to I just hope it's still light enough to cast out these small lures I like fishing uh, 164 ounce jig heads a lot maybe 132nd ounce So I'm hoping I'm still able to cast those out pretty far with this and then I'd also like to test out Maybe something a little bit heavier maybe something uh, like a 1 8 ounce beetle spin will tie on there. So it's rated for between 2 and 6 pounds. I'm going to be using 4 pound fluorocarbon today and between 1 32nd and 3 16th uh, ounces. So that 1 64th ounce definitely uh, on the lower end, but everything else in between there, 1 32nd, 1 16th, 1 8th, should be pretty good. So enough of me talking. I'm excited to get this rod on out there and let's test it out. Let's see what kind of fish we can get today. All right, here we go, let's make our first cast. Didn't go super far, but not too bad for 164th of an ounce. So 
Let's jig this thing slowly back. We'll try to get our first fish here. All right, so I've got to say, we're about five minutes in here. The castability uh, of this rod, I don't think is the best. So it is a little stiffer, like I mentioned, than my other ultralights, and that's kind of the trade-off. So this one's gonna have a little bit more power, a little bit more backbone, but I think my other ultralights, the little noodly noodly or ones, that's a weird word to say, uh, cast these little jig heads a little bit better, right? Because their tip's a little bit more flexible, they're a little bit lighter, and they're able to cast this 164th ounce jig head a little bit better. So let's keep fishing, and let's try to hook into our first fish here. on let's try to get this guy in that was a nice little run this is going to be a nice fish probably a mine cichlid these guys usually pull really well oh head came up oh man might have to tighten my drag up a little bit on this guy What is this? Gonna be a nice fish. Just let the rod and the reel do the work. Let this guy tire himself out here. What is that? Maybe a spotted tilapia? Might be a spotted tilapia. Oh, I thought I lost him for a second. Oh, it's a nice spotted tilapia. Let's get him on in here. Oh yeah, this is a nice fish. Look at that guy. All right, take a look at this beauty. Now, this is kind of that in-betweener, bigger than a panfish, should be uh, hard to pull this guy in on an ultralight, but that rod did fine. So this is definitely over a pound, probably close to two. This is a fat spotted tilapia, beautiful fish. That rod is crazy. Let's let this fish go, and let's get back to fishing. Let's get another one. All right, still casting this trap magnet around, getting the hang of this rod a little bit. It still doesn't cast as well as I would have liked or as well as my other rods do, but the sensitivity I would I will say is a little bit better. So I've been getting a lot of bites from like really, really small little three, maybe four inch fish, and I'm able to feel every single one really, really well. They're just a little bit too small for me to hook up with. Like there was one right there. So there's tons of these little fish in here, but we'll make a few more casts. If not, I'm gonna tie on something else and see how this rod performs with some different lure. Got him. One of those little bluegill. Alrighty, so these are those little bluegills that kept going after the trap magnet and would not get hooked. But even this little guy, I was able to feel every little bite. So this rod is really, really sensitive, so I do like that about it. But we'll let this one go, and I'm going to tie something else on to replace that little trout magnet. Pretty slow day, picked up two on the trap magnet. We're gonna go next up with this 132nd ounce beetle spin. So double the so double the weight, 132nd ounce. And now this is the bottom of what this rod is rated for. So this should be able to cast better and hopefully fish is better and hopefully we get more than two fish. Here we go, 
go. First cast with the beetle spin. Yeah, the, definitely cast better there. Now, nice steady retrieve. I can feel the vibrations. That's pretty good. Now, let's get a fish. All right, yeah, so definitely the Beetle Spin 132nd ounce cast better than the 164th ounce Trout Magnet. But I guess that makes sense, a little bit of a heavier lure, and this rod is rated at the lowest level for 132nd ounce. So it does cast 164th, and it can, just not gonna do as well as 132nd. So let's see if we can get a fish here on the Beetle Spin. Nice smooth retrieve on the way in, and that's about it. All right, so unfortunately we got nothing on the beetle spin. Uh, it casted really well with it, performed well with it, just couldn't get the fish to cooperate. So last lure I'm gonna try is this little guy. This is a 1 16th ounce lipless crankbait. So another moving style lure. So not gonna tell you much about sensitivity, but I would like to at least fight one or two more fish today uh, to see how the, how the rod performs with the fish on the, on the other end of the line. So we'll give that a shot and hopefully, fingers crossed, the fish cooperate. Oh yeah, this thing casts even better than the beetle spin. So yeah, probably 1 16th ounce should be the sweet spot. It's kind of in the middle of what this rod is rated for. 8th ounce I'm sure will be fine. 32nd ounce was good too. 1 64th seemed to be a little bit too light. Oh, fish on. Fish off. You kidding me? How does a fish not get hooked on two little troubles like this? Well, that's a good sign though. At least you got a fish to bite. Fish on. Not too big, but not super small either. Get him on up here. Oh, all this algae's really annoying. What is this, bluegill I think? Let's get him on in here. Yeah, bluegill. All right, now here's the thing. This is a decent sized bluegill, probably about eight inches or so. And the fight was nearly non-existent on that rod. I mean, super sensitive. I felt the bite, felt every little head shake but didn't put up much of a fight, didn't bend the rod too much. So we'll let this one go. But like I mentioned all the way in the beginning, that is a fairly stiff rod. Fish on. This guy hit right here at the edge of this little line. Little mine cichlid. All right, check out this guy. Little mine cichlid. He followed my lure in, so I gave it a couple little vertical jigs, and he hit right on the edge of that algae line. So small fish. Now this guy put a little bit more of a fight and more of a bend into the rod than that bluegill, but these guys usually do have a uh, good fighting ability. But fish number four, we'll let this one go. And I think the uh, little lipless crankbait here uh, is the lure of the day. Got two fish here in about 10 minutes. All right, so that's gonna do it. I'd like to film this before the sun completely sets. So after about two hours of testing this thing out, I'm ready to give my kind of first impressions after one day of use on this. Uh, I'm gonna just start out with a super simple question. Is the Panfish Legend Extreme worth $360? I am going to say no, it's not. 
Is this a very nice rod and by far the best and nicest rod I own? Yes. Okay, so I really like it. I would buy it again, but I would not, I don't think I would pay full retail for this. It just it doesn't seem like it does anything that much better than the rods I already own. All right, it is an extremely nice rod, very, very sensitive. Uh, those little two, three inch bluegill that kept going after my trout magnet, I was able to feel every single one of them very, very accurately. Uh, unfortunately though, like I mentioned way in the beginning, St. Croix, I'm learning that they kind of have a reputation uh, that their rods, they're a little bit stiffer, a little bit stronger than the power they're rated for. So my medium mojo bass, it feels like more like a medium heavy, and this ultralight feels more like a light, maybe even a medium light. Alright, that giant spotted tilapia put a nice bend on it and this thing was able to handle it. But like that little bluegill, even the big size bluegill here that I caught uh, toward the end, didn't really put up much of a fight. Now I don't know about you guys, but the reason I like fishing ultralight is because even the little fish feel like big fish. And I'm able to feel that way with some other rods, with this one not so much. So I, I think I'm going to use this rod for my kind of bigger presentations. So 1 8 ounce, 1 16 ounce. If I'm going to use 1 32nd, 1 64th, I'll probably stick with my other ultralights. So this will be more kind of like my canal rod for like kind of the bigger fish, bigger panfish. And then if I'm just like messing around with bluegill, I'll probably stick with my, uh, my other ones. So if you're thinking about getting this rod, uh, for bluegill I would say hard pass. Look for something else because you're not going to be really be able to uh, enjoy fighting those bluegills too much. Same thing for other kind of sunfish. Uh, but for larger kind of panfish, like uh, I think crappie, this would be a really good rod for that. Uh, even like yellow bass, white bass, something that's just a little bit bigger than uh, most panfish. But other than that, I mean, it is an extremely nice rod. I, I love the way it felt in hand. Really nice craftsmanship, real nice sensitivity. It's got a 15 year transferable warranty. So even though I bought this used and it's one year old, it still has 14 years on it. So if you're looking for a St. Croix rod, I would check eBay out. They have some really good deals. Uh, like this one, I saw a couple of other ones that I bid on that I didn't win. That sold for still a very nice discount. They're only a year old, right? And they still got that long warranty. So I hope you like this little review. Uh, at the time that I bought this rod and at the time of filming this, there's only one other guy that did like a, an actual review of this after using it. There's a couple tackle shops out there that filmed a like in-shop review or like an eye cast or something. But keep watching my channel. I'm sure I'll be using this rod a little bit more in the uh, coming weeks and coming months and hopefully coming years. So you'll be able to see this thing in action a little bit more and see what it can really do on the water. Uh, instead of just kind of one day of use. So yeah, I hope you guys liked it, and then I will see you next time.